Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Mulligatani Soup. That's right, I'm going to show you my take on what's considered one of the world's greatest soups, which was invented, I hear, because British soldiers in India were not able to start a meal without soup. And they say the name translates to pepper water, and as you'll see, the pepper part makes sense, but the water part does not. This is incredibly hearty, savory, and comforting, and something that should be on every soup lover's bucket list. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And we'll begin by heating some butter and oil over medium-high heat in our most trusted soup pot. And once that's hot, we'll go ahead and brown up some boneless, skinless chicken thighs, which after we place in, we should season with a generous amount of salt. And what we'll do is get that first side about four or five minutes, or until we've achieved some decent browning, at which point we'll flip those over and do the same thing to the other side. And I like half and half, but if you want to use all oil or all butter, feel free. And while our chicken's browning, if we want to multitask, we can go ahead and put together our spice blend, which is going to start with a big old spoon of curry powder, some garam masala, some ground cumin, some freshly ground black pepper, some dried mustard, some coriander, and then last but never ever least, some cayenne pepper. And that's it. As my good friend who I've never met Gordon Ramsay might say, spice blend done. And at this point, we'll go back and check our chicken, which should be nicely browned. And if so, we'll remove that from the pot and transfer that onto a plate to cool. And once that does cool, what we'll do is chop it up so we can toss it back into the soup later. And then what we'll do is lower our heat to medium. And we will toss that recently mixed up spice blend into this incredibly flavorful fat. And we will cook it stirring for about 30 seconds to sort of toast those spices and wake up those flavors. And yes, your kitchen's going to smell amazing. And after cooking those spices for about a half a minute or so, we'll go ahead and toss in a whole bunch of minced garlic, as well as some finely chopped fresh ginger. And we will cook that stirring for about a minute. And once that's been accomplished, we can toss in our aromatic vegetables, also known as a mirepoix, also known as diced onions, celery, and carrots. And we also want to add a nice big pinch of salt. And we'll give all that a stir. And we'll cook that for about three or four minutes, or until those onions start to turn translucent. And the reason to toss the salt in was just not for seasoning. Right, when you add salt to sauteing diced vegetables, it actually draws out moisture. And having that moisture in the pot is going to prevent our spices and garlic from overcooking and maybe burning. And then once our aromatic vegetation has softened up a little bit, we will add a little bit of tomato paste for color, flavor, and acidity. And we will stir that in. And we'll continue to cook this mixture for about three more minutes, which should be plenty of time to cook out that raw flavor of the tomato paste. Plus our veggies are gonna soften and sweeten a little more. And after about three minutes, we will stop and continue on with the ingredients, which would be some cubed up Yukon gold potatoes, or any potatoes, a little bit of diced fresh tomato, and then one possibly surprising ingredient, a couple peeled up diced Granny Smith apples, Oh yeah, that's one of the key ingredients. And just for fun, let me show you a fast and easy way to do that to an apple. Okay, after we peel it, we'll make one cut like this, right where we think the core is. Then we'll place it down on the flat side, and we'll make another cut straight down, and then turn it and do the same thing, and then flip it over and make the last cut, which if everything goes according to plan, should separate all the good apple from the core. And that's it, once that's been done, we will simply make like quarter inch slices, and then turn and cut across every quarter inch to produce, yes, you guessed it, about quarter inch pieces. And no, they don't have to be perfect, which is good because these weren't. And that's it, a very fast, easy technique. And we will now return to our normal programming, where following the apples, we will add some red lentils, which is what we're gonna to use to give our soup a little bit of thickness and body. And we'll also wanna add one bay leaf, plus about a teaspoon or so of tamarind paste, which adds a beautiful fruity sourness. Oh, and fun fact, you cannot flick a little bit of tamarind paste off the end of a spoon, as you can see here. All right, there we go. And then next up, we're gonna add six cups of homemade broth, which I made at home by mixing some chicken bouillon paste into some hot water. And kidding aside, if you were ever gonna get away with using a chicken broth from the store, this would be the soup. And then what we'll do is give everything a stir and raise our heat to high because we wanna bring this up to a simmer. And while we're waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and add one optional ingredient, and that would be some coconut cream, which is basically like an extra rich, extra thick coconut milk. 
And I'm going to go ahead and stir that in as well. Which reminds me, you can use coconut milk instead, or a splash of heavy cream, or if you want nothing. Since according to my research, the earliest recipes for this did not include cream or coconut cream. But I do love that little bit of flavor and richness it adds. Plus now I can use the leftovers in a nice lamb curry or something. But whether you coconut cream or not, once that comes up to a simmer on high, we will give that a stir and we'll lower our heat to medium low or whatever setting gives us a nice low but very steady simmer. Oh, and don't waste time skimming any foam. As you'll see, that will dissipate and disappear. And other than the occasional stir, there's really not much to do here. All right, like I already said, once our chicken's cool, we can go ahead and cut that up. But I think we do want to let our soup simmer about a half hour before we add our chicken in. And if we added those at the beginning of the simmering process, by the time our soup was done, those pieces might be falling apart, which is not something I want to have happen. All right, if you do want it to fall apart, you can go ahead and add it when you add your stock, but not me. I'm gonna wait for this to simmer for about a half hour, at which point all our veggies should be fully cooked and beautifully tender. And thanks to those lentils, our soup will have thickened up a little, and it's probably gonna look something like this. And at this point, we will add our chicken back in, and of course, do not, under any circumstances, forget the accumulated juices. And as you can see, I just roughly chopped mine up, but some people do prefer to shred it. So we'll leave the exact size and shape up to you. I mean, you are after all the Chef Johnny of your mulligatani. And as long as your pieces are small enough to fit on a spoon, I don't think it matters. Okay, if they don't fit on a spoon, then it's just annoying. And no one, and I mean no one, wants to eat an annoying soup. And that's it. After stirring in our chicken, all we need to do is continue simmering this soup, stirring occasionally, for another maybe 20, 30 minutes, or until everything is perfect, as judged by you. And for me, that means our potatoes and veggies are fully cooked, and our lentils are fully hydrated, and have slightly thickened things up. And obviously, everything tastes exactly how we want. And when it comes to a soup, we can hope it's perfectly seasoned, or we can know it's perfectly seasoned by giving it a taste and adjusting if need be. Okay, even though we added salt a couple times along the way, you might need another pinch. So make sure you taste before you serve. And in case you're keeping score at home, after I added the chicken, I let the soup simmer for about 25 minutes before I decided it was perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a ladle so you can see what mine looked like when I thought it was done. And as gorgeous as the color is, it's gonna look even more beautiful in the bowl which is the next stop. So I went ahead and served that up in a warm bowl next to some incredible green onion garlic naan, which I made using a new technique that requires no yeast and no rise time. And it really was amazing. So yes, I'm gonna show you that in the next video. And then as far as final flourishes go, I'm gonna garnish with a spoon of yogurt as well as some freshly picked cilantro leaves and then some freshly and finely sliced scallions. And then finally some Indian chili flakes, which I don't have. So I used Aleppo pepper instead, which I think works nicely. And that's it, our mulligatani is mulliga ready. So I grabbed a spoon and tucked in. And that, my friends, was one of the most delicious soups I've had in a very, very long time. Or maybe decades. This was absolutely phenomenal. And when I say this soup has everything, I mean it has everything. Okay, it's spicy, savory, a little bit sweet, complex, aromatic incredibly satisfying and comforting. And if it's possible for a soup to be rich and decadent and light and refreshing at the same time, this is the soup. And for me, this had the perfect viscosity and I wouldn't want it any thicker, but if you do, you can just simply add some more lentils. Oh, and that reminds me, some people don't use lentils. They actually toss in some rice instead. But for me, I think lentils are the way to go. And I think the potatoes are more than enough carbs especially if you're gonna be dipping in some naan. And please do not let that long ingredient list put you off. Yes, we have to do a little bit of slicing and dicing, and there's a lot of things that go in this, but everything's easy to find, and you'll have most of it in your pantry already, and it really is a simple and easy soup to make, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.